Do you remember an instance where you came back here in Toronto and he was on the ice and he's chirping you a little bit? You guys did the, the pigeon call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's something that's still, I always laugh about that uh, because I always get people on Twitter that send it to me. Pigeon! pigeon. We came back first game, and uh, you know we uh, we like to goof around a little bit. And uh, Scott Hartnell started doing some pigeon noise, starting calling us pigeons. So uh, that was kind of inside jokes with us. It's kind of funny that the the snapshot of that that got caught on the ice, and uh, um, that's just how uh, he is on the ice. He's again always yapping, always just trying to get maybe distract the other uh, team a little bit with by doing stuff like that. But uh, I got a kick out of it, and it was pretty funny. I remember doing it and him laughing and uh, kind of shaking his head, but uh, it was uh, it was pretty special for him to come back to Philly. And uh, but now he's back with uh, uh, the orange and black. Was it uh, fun running in the water? Or did you try to stay out of the water? No, we ran, jumped in every once in a while and it got a little too hot. So that was nice to uh, be able to cool down whenever you wanted to. And finally, how does this all play into like pretty much your first week, first few days as a flyer? Exactly, yeah, that tops it off pretty nice. I just got to be here on the beach uh, playing some softball a little later, so it should be a fun rest of the day. Awesome. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, he's kind of a quiet guy. Um, you know, he was, uh, uh, he was very focused on hockey, and, um, you know, he, he was obviously very, very skilled, and we were able to, to go up the system together, and, um, you know, I had a chance to play with him. Uh, for a few years, me, him, and Aaron Asham, we uh, had uh, some pretty good chemistry together. So uh, it was a lot of fun to be able to uh, to be a rookie and and, uh, and be there at the same time as him. He was kind of a big name, getting getting drafted second overall, and uh, the organization, the fans were very excited for for him to be part of uh, of the Flyers. And uh, I got to know James a lot, and uh, we spent a lot of time together. And um, you know, we uh, we had a lot of fun together. So. Uh, it's fun to see uh, how, how he is as a player now. After three seasons in Philadelphia, JVR was traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs, where he spent the next six years of his career, only to come back to where it all began on day one of free agency. James Van Riemsdyk, what a signing for him. Five years, $35 million. Well, they're looking to score more goals in Philly. The familiarity he had with the Flyers obviously being drafted. Uh, we always hear about players making the pitch as well, picking up the phone. It sounds like Claude Giroux and Jake Voracek certainly did that in this situation to bring JVR back to Philly. Following a busy offseason, the Flyers went on to spoil the party in Vegas, beating the defending Western Conference champions 5-2. to two. However, their fortunes wouldn't continue on the next game of their opening trip, as Van Riemsdyk was injured in Colorado and would miss the next six weeks. Yeah, you always, again, when you get hit in those sort of situations with the puck, it's always kind of like you think it's more of a stinger and you just got to walk it off. And it got to the point where it was walking it off and it wasn't really feeling much better. So you, you realize that it could be something, uh, something wrong in there. And obviously it was what it was. And, um, yeah, and it stinks to miss time, especially uh, especially at the beginning of a year like that when you're in a new situation, when you're doing all these things to try to adjust as is. I think the best way to do it is to try to immerse yourself uh, fully in it. So to have that process be put on hold uh, definitely uh, wasn't the best thing. Probably feel a little bit more included when you're able to do drills and whatnot. Yeah, it's tough, especially uh, you know, when the team's on the road and stuff uh, for that long of a time. It's uh, not easy being home here by yourself. So definitely it was nice to see the boys uh, get back here and obviously after a uh, hell of a road trip so uh, so yeah that's exciting stuff. Well, pr proud of myself over the course of my career on just being proactive and progressive when it comes to that sort of stuff so that you, again you can feel as healthy and as good as possible and it helps your performance so I think and you know, obviously going into that injury I feel like again I was uh, in a good spot uh, physically and that sort of stuff so I think that certainly helps when you go through this and then Again, it's a matter of uh, just having a good plan in place and uh, good protocols and uh, just following that and just being diligent on that. After a long and strenuous rehab process, Van Riemsdyk was finally ready to return to the lineup against the New Jersey Devils. Like uh, opening night all over again for you? Uh, yeah, we'll see, uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, uh, obviously when you're out this long, you always get that, uh, that extra sense of excitement and uh, that sort of stuff. So. Uh, when I get a chance to get back in there, um, I'll be ready to go. He was the big addition in the offseason, but hasn't played since the second game of the year. James Van Riemsdyk returns to the lineup tonight 
as the Flyers host the division rival New Jersey Devils. Flyers anxious to get back on track after having their six game point streak end on Tuesday. It's the, Fly the return did not go as planned as the Devils walked away with a 3-0 victory in a game where the Flyers hit the post six times and it had a power play goal disallowed. Course of a season, I think, again, you always look back if you're getting the chances, and I thought we were getting a lot of good chances to score. So uh, obviously that's encouraging, but again, uh, didn't, weren't good enough to, to get going tonight. Nothing puts a loss in perspective more than meeting someone who has truly gone through hard times. Luke Rogers, a 14-year-old cancer survivor who grew up and plays in the same rink as JVR did growing up, the two had a chance to meet and spend some time on and off the ice with each other. Have you been in here yet? No. Come on in here. I got to show you something we got special for you. Oh. What do you think of that? That's huh? cool. Thank you. <laughs> My number is. Where did you get number number ninety eight? Why not? Why that number? Uh, I I I like McDavid, one of my favorite players, ninety seven. So you want to one up him? Uh, yeah, and then That's Gretzky's ninety nine, so go in the middle, ninety eight. Good idea. Yeah. I like it. Put it on. Sure. You might as well wear that around the rest of the day, right? Yeah. You look good in orange, Luke. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I got drafted. <laughs> Another one of the great things about uh, playing in a place that's pretty local to where I uh, grew up, obviously only what, like 60, 70 miles away, and uh, you're able to have people, meet people like Luke. What, uh, what grade are you in? Nice. Nice, okay, cool. Yeah. So what birth year does that make you then? Are you a 2004? Oh, yeah, 04, yeah. Okay, cool. What are you? 89. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm getting old. <laughs> yeah. And again, I think it, I remember being his age and seeing someone like Jimmy Dowd play in the NHL, and he kind of gave hope for the Jersey guys that you could maybe play at that level. And um, that's something that's pretty cool to, to, again, to be able to be in that position, to have some fun with him out on the ice, and maybe take his uh, mind off a little bit what he's been going through. It's so much different when everyone's watching. I know, right? You can feel them watching. I also uh, train at Howell in the morning. Yeah, okay. And yep. I, do you train at Howell? Uh, um, so the Hav are the Havillans still running that rink? Uh, no. Okay. Then different people. Okay, yeah, because I know the Havillans pretty well, so I know they used yeah. to run it there. Okay, uh, Luke. Luke, nice to meet you, bud. I'm trying to fight. I'm fucking lighting the cow up here. <laughs> yeah. You had a good day, too. You had a really good day. Um, and have some fun out there, so that was cool to, again, get to do something like that, and uh, it means something a little bit extra special when you can do that with someone uh, who's from uh, your neck of the woods, and uh, um, again, it means that much more to So you grew up a Flyers fan, obviously? Uh, I'll tell you the truth, I'm a Sabres fan. Oh, a Sabres fan. But I'm a big fan of you. Oh, oh thank you. And I appreciate your family. That. Yeah, thank you. But I like the Flyers better than New York teams. Okay, that's good. New York teams, so. <laughs> You, what made you a Sabres fan? What, uh, I have what teams? to be. My mom's from Buffalo. Oh, ah, okay, okay. Yeah. So I was diagnosed in uh, 2015, and uh, October of 2015, and then I started playing hockey again in January of 2017. So like that year, I couldn't walk, couldn't bathe myself, couldn't do anything, and then I was just like, I got my poured out, which I get all, which which I got all my really intense chemo through. And I just started playing like full contact and stuff. I'm not nearly where I was before now, but I'll get there. And my treatment's over in February of 2019. How long have you had this date circled on your calendar? Uh, well, my whole life I've wanted to meet him, so I'd say my whole life. The following night, the Flyers would find themselves in a situation where learning from Luke's resolve and fight would be needed. After just one goal provided by Van Riemsdyk in the first 50 minutes of the game, the Flyers found themselves down 5-1 to one with 9.42 left. No celebration from DK, more relief than anything, but yes, that light can go on. Off the draw, it bounces for the Katuri, who scores! Strikes again. Lightning don't like that. A little animosity. 
Nothing wrong with that. This is back and picked by Couturier. He gets connecting across for Giroux. Giroux for connecting. He scores! It's a one goal game. Connecting has his second of the day. This game here's eight shots and rebound. Seven scores! Couple of cracks at it. He pounds it home. The Flyers' push ultimately wasn't enough as the Lightning struck in overtime, but the resolve and resilience of the Flyers was impressive. Anthony Sorelli wins it for Tampa Bay. He fought off Simmons. After a slow start and tough loss in Buffalo, the Flyers came out hot against the Rangers in a 4-0 shutout. Following a quick flight to Toronto for a back-to-back, -back, JVR once again found himself in a familiar setting. Again, I think it was something uh, for sure as far as the closure and moving on to the next chapter. I think it helps to have that game out of the way now too. Uh, I think again, obviously, it was uh, the six years I spent there I couldn't have enjoyed more. And I think it was again a big part of what made me the player and person I am today. So I have nothing but great things to say about it. Getting a chance to play there for six years, you realize the following that the team has and that's Pretty apparent by, uh, I mean, again, how many fans and that sort of things that we have. It is apparent by how much media there is because there's just so much, so many people that want to know about the team and different stories and different angles and different insights. Back here after six seasons and you're in a flyer sweater this time. What's going through your mind tonight? What is it like to be back? Yeah, certainly. Uh, again, making this walk, uh, it's a familiar building, but obviously not from the, the side that I came in on today. So uh, again, obviously it's a, a different feeling for sure and. Uh, Again, uh, something I'm looking forward to getting out there and playing the game tonight. Perfect, we're clear. Good All luck right. tonight. Thank you. Okay. What's going on, guys? How are you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you guys. Missed you around here. Yeah, good to see you guys. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Far away, folks. So how does this feel right now? Yeah, it certainly uh, feels a little odd, almost like being a stranger in your own house a little bit. Uh, obviously making the different walk in, but... Uh, again, obviously you're going to have a lot of coverage uh, for the team because of all that. And uh, again, it was something that was, I thought, fun and it made it exciting to come to the rink every day to have that sort of uh, buzz around uh, the team. Uh, although some of the stuff could... could There's some slower news days where things would be funnier with some of the stories they'd uh, have to write about, but uh, ultimately I enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, those guys do a great job and they treated me very well in my six years there. So. Uh, um, so yeah, that was all good. The got off. We'll move the puck at center right here is Johnson faking the shot, then taking it and he scores. This time here in trial and what he's going to do with the Flyers. Here's Johnson with that speed again and he scores. Goals in the first six minutes and 19 seconds of this one. For Connections, and here is Johnson. He scores. A hat trick in the first period. Out the other way. It is numbers for the Leafs. Lebo holds in the middle mark. Directly over the shot. He scores. To make sure you make uh, smart decisions, and I thought again uh, early on. Had a couple breakdowns and obviously led to goals, so that uh, is never a good way to start. So uh, obviously a tough one for us tonight, and we got to uh, again find a way to consistently start games better. All right, let's move on to uh, some of the news from the hockey world. And today we get uh, Ron Hextall fired yeah. by the Flyers. We didn't have a lot of time to, to jump into this, but yeah. I found this remarkably intriguing. What about you? Uh, intriguing for sure, but there's so many layers to this, and I, I think on the surface you can look at it and say. I think again, and when that sort of stuff happens, it obviously gets everyone's attention. Um, and again, uh, this is uh, you know an organization that has very high standards and stuff like that for itself. So, like I said, when stuff uh, when, when when we're kind of underachieving on the ice, it's, it's stuff like this uh, can happen. Great, thank you, Joe. Um, I want to welcome you all here today. Um, certainly, yesterday was a tough day for the whole Flyers organization. You know, these decisions are not easy. But I want to tell you that Paul and I have been in constant communication, you know, the last several weeks. And 
really pondering the team performance and um, the bottom line is we just thought we needed to make more progress. You know, a week ago I was basically out scouting uh, for the Devils and driving in my car uh, through Iowa, uh, you know, watching, watching some American Hockey League games. And, and um, you know, Ray Shiro called me first to say that, uh, that, that Paul Holmgren uh, wanted to speak with me. And, and about a day later, Paul reached out to me and quickly came into Philly, had some interviews, and, and uh, here we are.